Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, 138 MMA proudly brings to you the hottest picks in the world. And I'm with my guest, Mike from the Couch Warrior Pod. You guys know him. You've seen him around. He's been here before. He's nothing new to the channel. So, guys, we're going to break down this PFL, uh, the opening night of the season or what have you. I've never done PFL breakdowns in years prior, but this year I am because they purchased Bellator, who I was doing breakdowns for. So now we're doing these, but we're doing them live, and it's fun because I get to bring on different guests. We've got Mike here. We all know Mike. Mike's prepared for this card, hopefully more than I am, aren't you, Mike? <laughs> Bro, no. I'm just playing. Bro, you remind. I, I remembered about this show last night on my own show. I know. And I was like, oh, oh my god, and I had barely taped this card because I've been dealing with so much crap, like work, my own show stuff, all the interviews, uh, planning a wedding now. So. It's been a lot. <laughs> I completely forgot, but hey, we're here. I just grinded so much tape in the last like three hours. So oh, no shit. Okay. I have takes on most of these fights. There's a few where I'm gonna have to defer to you, but the rest I have at least need a take on. Like huh? there's a few that you just don't need a take on. Like there's That's a few that you like... never know. You never know. I mean, like yeah. Sometimes I'll skip a fight on the regionals because because one guy's like minus seven hundred and the other guy seems like he sucks. And then I miss out on a plus 500 ticket if I would have just paid attention. It's true. But like sometimes they're like minus 1500 for a reason. You know what I mean? Usually. So, usually are. Yeah. Although the first fight of the night, I guess we could just jump right into it. Um, the first fight of the night is Bryce Meredith and Ty Johnson. And this is one where like, here's the, here's the deal. The line's probably wide, but like. And I understand. Okay, so I understand value betting, and people get have gotten mad at me before because I've been because I because like if the line's wide, you have to bet it. But like if the line's wide and it's saying the guy has like a ninety eight percent chance of winning, and I think he's got like a ninety four percent chance of winning, I'm not gonna bet it. Like I understand over you're supposed to. Oh, I understand over the long haul you're supposed to be able to like whatever. But if it's like 94% to 98%, I, I, so like Bryce Meredith probably wins a decision here, but like he could lose. And I think the line's a little wide, but what's your take? Well, I mean, in terms of what you were saying with like percentages and whatnot, it really just, it comes down so, to like your estimated edge, right? Right. And like, if I think for, like, I, I don't think this, cause this is one of the fights I have to defer on, but say I think Ty Johnson out of 10 times wins this fight twice, right? So he's got a 20% chance, which I'm not saying that. I right. haven't taped this one, but I'm just saying as an example. And they put him at, I don't know, 5%, right? Or or 10%. Then you have a 10% estimated edge. And it's like, it doesn't mean you have to, but if you're correct, you know, it also depends on if your estimates are correct. Like if you're good at this, then yes. If not, then it's not going to help you to just play odds like that. But that's usually how I, you know, end up playing big dogs, stuff like that. But in terms of this fight, man, I just don't remember this dude, Ty Johnson, at all. And I mean, I watch a lot of regionals and I'm looking at his record now, but maybe I would maybe I saw the Oscar fight. Uh, I don't remember. So I don't know what his takedown defense is like. I know Meredith is a great wrestler. He's yeah. not spectacular at anything else, really. His striking's fine. He's developing. He's one of those guys that like Bellator swooped up real quick. They love their wrestler prospects who are O and O coming into Bellator, and then they build them up. So I don't know, but I have seen a surprising amount of people who aren't necessarily value people playing Meredith and playing him like for full units and stuff. So this is a fight that I am gonna have to go tape because I'm interested. Yeah, and like, so like what I'm saying is like, okay, I think. I don't know what I don't know what they have it lined at now. Earlier he was like minus fifteen hundred, right, or something like that, which is a pretty high impl implied probability. Uh, off the top of my head, I don't know what that is, but it's a lot. Like anything, anytime it gets over minus a thousand, it's like essentially a hundred percent, but not really. Like Ty Johnson probably has like a six or seven percent chance of winning, maybe, but like I don't think it's worth betting. Like he's pretty, he's on a tidy little win streak, five wins in a row, like at least. I think maybe it's more than that. Um, I'm gonna pull it up to make sure. Five wins in a row, six wins in a row. Uh, it's like four or five, I think. Yeah. 
Seven he's plus nine hundred, so they're giving him a ten percent chance. Yeah, uh, is nine? Is went down to minus nine hundred? Plus nine hundred on on. Oh, oh he's plus nine hundred. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, I just don't know. I mean, I just don't know how. Because Bryce Mitchell doesn't, or not Bryce Mitchell, Bryce Meredith doesn't do a ton of damage in his grappling. So, like, I don't know. With the judging now, maybe it's worth the dog shot. But, like, yeah, Bryce Meredith should win. He should, where's he should it, where's this card? What commission is this? Texas? I think so. Yeah, yeah, it's Texas. Inter yeah, okay. San Antonio, yep. Yeah, so, like, I don't know. Bryce Meredith is a pick. I'm probably not going to bet it. Like, I don't, even, I don't even have him parlayed in, like, my ridiculous parlay that I put on Patreon every every week. So um, we spent way too much time on this one because, you know, whatever. Uh, do you have a take on the Brennan versus Ivy fight? Uh, I didn't tape it. I do know both guys, though, decently. I know Ivy. You know, he's similar to his brother. He's a pretty good wrestler. He's a fine striker. He's it's not really good, to be honest. He's not a great fighter. Um, right. On the other side with Brennan, he's like – he's good. He's good. He's He's – the definition of what I was talking about before, one of these Bellator guys who came in literally at 0-0-0, and mm -hmm. they built him up to 9-0. and I tried fading him last time out against Weber, Weber Almeida. Close. And, dude, he was minus 600. I got a crazy line on Weber. And my dude Weber is winning, winning, winning. I look like such a genius. And then – but, yeah, I think Brennan should win this fight. Do I think he should be minus 1,800? I'd have to tape it. But I don't think any amount of value will get me on Ivy. I don't think he's very good. Yeah, it's 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 another one of those fights where like it's just not worth betting the other side. I think Brennan's the better. He's definitely the A side here. He's the better fighter. Um, his grappling is super legit. Um, he can get in some bad spots on the feet sometimes, uh, but like if he gets it to the mat, it's over. Um, I do think so. I was on the other side. I had Brennan in just a ridiculous parlay last time. In fact. I'm I leaving the show. Bucks. Bye. I put five bucks on a four. Uh, no, um, it was a 14 leg parlay over like four or five weeks, and Brennan was one of the random legs that I threw in there. And if he'd, if the, like that would have just ruined it, but I ended up hitting that 14 leg parlay. It was like a five dollar parlay that paid out like over, and it was like a hundred and some odd dollars or whatever. I'm like, Heck that's yeah, a lot man. of tuna cans. I'm happy. Dude, I'm happy dude, for you. Dude. I ate so many. I'm just, I'm just kidding. But like, dude, I was eating for that week, you know. Think so, about uh, the lentils. Yeah, I, I, I plenty of lentils for that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so Brennan saved the day. I and like, Brennan's a friend of the channel. Um, he's in my comment section a lot. Uh, so like, at one time I was when I was breaking down his fights, we started talking or whatever. And then after the the Almeida fight, he came back in the comments and he's like, "Sorry, I made you sweat, dude." <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> "Brother." Tried to kill me here, but that's cool. So I, do him, like that's dope. I like that. He's a good dude. Uh, so I, I, I kind of root for him anyway, but I think, I mean, they're setting it up for a win here. Like, that's what are the props to... on that one? Let me check. Uh, he, him by submission is probably the only thing I'd want to play, but he did get a knockout in his last fight. Lucky bastard. Uh, oh, <laughs> Brennan, Brennan's sub is minus two, 220. No, Jesus. Yeah. I mean, he probably gets the sub, but it's, you know, it is what it is. Brennan by decision could be interesting. It's plus 725. Really? Yeah. That's not worth that, that's that's like worth a couple bucks, you know? That's a that's not bad cuz he could win a decision. Uh um, I see, I see why it's priced the way it is though. Ivy's been submitted four times. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I mean the submission is the likely path. So um but I mean we can move on. Like these are over like minus a thousand fighters we're breaking down. We have Chelsea Hackett and Jenna Bishop. Is this one you put anything into? No, uh, very well, very little, but I do know both girls also. Um, Hackett, well, so I'm kind of biased, so I might, even if I like Hackett here, I might not bet it just because. So I'm a really big survivor nerd. I don't know if you've ever watched the show, never. It's, uh, I'm, I'm a major nerd, and not only have I watched all 46 seasons of the American one, I've also watched all of the Australian ones. And she was on the Australian one, and she was dope on it. She ended up having to leave because she got sick, so they had to take her off the show. But so I got a special place in my heart. I love I love my Survivor players. But so Hackett comes from reality TV. You're saying she went into reality TV. I believe it was after she lost to Victoria Leonardo. If oh, I have okay. my timings correct. 
might be why she was gone so long and then she got sick so i don't know Checks but out. hackett's not bad you know she's a good fighter she's a good striker she's got okay takedown defense uh decent decent scrambles probably the better striker in this matchup to be honest i don't think bishop is that great of a striker but she's gonna have a pretty tremendous grappling edge i mean victoria leonardo out grappling you and be finishing you is a pretty horrible look and yeah, so I'm going to go with Bishop probably, but that's one that I will tape, but I'll probably avoid just due to my bias. Yeah, so it, it's kind of like, uh, before. I guess before I jump into that, I'm going to, we got a couple of regulars on the channel that are in the chat and Grateful Dude, JD, and MMA Clips. And I want to highlight MMA Clips specifically because today, I think it was, maybe it was last night, MMA Clips put the funniest comment I think I've ever seen on my, on my video. And he said, um, it was something along the lines of my new haircut would make me Pat Barry's favorite student. Oh my and, God. oh, that was so hilarious. So, MMA Clips, you are hilarious, dude. Finally. Justice for Rose. Get her out of there. Seriously, get her out of there. Hopefully, Rose just shows up with a mohawk soon and we can we can just... Oh, my God. Then she's going to become champ again. Dude, that'd be wild. Um, but back to the fight we're actually breaking down. Chelsea Hackett, Janet Bishop. So, you, like you said, Hackett's the better striker. I don't think that anybody's going to say that otherwise and bishop she's kind of older but like she doesn't have a lot of miles on the clock six and oh in mma she's done some grappling but grappling doesn't really damage you like mma does like i can grapple all day every day and just like yeah you get some mat burn you get some scuffs on your on your you know face and your skin and stuff but like you can fuck up you your know, joints though no yeah. i mean you can i mean i've never had any and i've been doing it for a long time now but like i don't know like nothing bad anyway but like you don't get brain damage. You don't get like knocked out. So she doesn't have that kind of damage is what I'm saying. Um, and I think Bishop, if she gets this to the mat, she's, she's dominating this fight. Like she's very slick on the mat. So I do think Jenna Bishop is the side, but yeah, it's like another one that like, I, there's not many fights on this card that I pulled the trigger on. I I have like three fighters. I bet maybe, maybe four, three or four. Um, yeah. Bishop's not going to be one of them, but I do think she wins. So um, we can move on. We got a good, Another uh, interesting fight in the women's flyweight division. That is one thing I do like about these PFL cards is like, you're just going to get a bunch of them in the same division. So like you can kind of compare them in the first round of this with the other people and how they did. And then it really makes the next time that they go up against each other a little easier because you're like, I have fresh information this season, which I hate the season format, but it's nice for that. You know what I mean? Um, but we have uh, Kano Watanabe and Shayna Young next. I got it pulled up right over here. Um, I'm going to start this one off by saying that I don't trust Watanabe to win, but I still think she wins. Like Shayna Young's a live dog here. Has like Watanabe fights too close with people sometimes, and like she's lost decisions that I thought maybe she sh or she's won decisions that I thought maybe she's lost in the past and it's like just because she's really close um off the top of my head i can't remember now but i remember thinking that when i was doing the when i was writing everything down let me pull it up it was let's see i thought she won the lima Le farland split decision i thought she won that one but she lost it and there was one maybe it was the laura fight but i, I could be wrong maybe i maybe i'm misremembering that but i remember she fought she fights way too close to make me feel good about it is what I'm saying. And uh, Shayna Young, you kind of know what you're going to get. And I don't think she's like super high level, but like, you know, she could pull this one off. I didn't bet it. I'll, I'll, for the sake of a tapology pick, I'll take Watanabe, but I don't, I don't feel convicted either way. What about you? Yeah. Again, this is another one. We're finally getting to the fights that I did tape, but this one, I, I taped a little bit of Watanabe because I needed a refresher on her striking. Yeah, Young will probably be a better striker, so I get that. I don't really understand why people are really running to the window to bet her. Like, her takedown defense isn't good. Like, it's not. And it's it's improved, but it's still not good. Like, she's getting taken down literally all the time. And it wasn't just the Miranda Maverick fight. Like, she, she's she got a major grappling deficiency. She has good striking. Like, I'd, she might be the better striker, probably. Again, I have to tape it, but I remember her being at range a little bit better. I bet her by knockout against Gina Mazzani at like plus a thousand. That felt good. So yeah, I mean, if she can keep it on the feet, yeah, she's a live dog. I just I'm not convinced she can keep it on the feet. Watanabe's a good grappler. 
I she's agree. got enough hands to set up the takedowns. Like I talk about this all the time. Being a good wrestler isn't good enough. You need to also have hands to set up the takedowns. And if I remember correctly, she's more of a judo player too, not really shooting doubles. Correct. So that'll be an interesting thing. That's what I want to look at. Has Shauna Young been taken down by trips and throws, or has it always been double legs or singles? Something I got to look at. Maybe Watanabe by decision might be something. I just looked at it. It was like minus 110 or something like that. So we'll It likely see. does go decision, though. I think that's a pretty good guess. Pretty good pretty good pick. But Yeah, I mean, the uh, over is like two, minus 250, minus 260. But her decision's minus 120. I might do that. We'll see. That's not bad. That might be worth a flyer on it. Because uh, yeah, I do I think if it goes to decision, she does have a lot of upside. Um, especially with the f- ability to be getting takedowns and things like that. Uh, JD mentioned the weigh-ins. I forgot the weigh-ins took place today. I've been working all day, so like I didn't watch them. I have no idea. But that's a good thing to make note of. I totally spaced that off. So, yeah, the weigh-ins definitely could could be um, something that we could use as a basis for this, but I don't have a clue. So JD watched them. JD, keep us up on it in the chat if we need to know anything. Um, as far as the next fight, this one is one I'm hoping you have a strong take on because I'm on the fence. Steve Mowry, Oleg Popov, do you have a strong take? Because I hope so. Not a strong take, but I have some thoughts. So I did get to tape this one, and I know Mowry really well. I've taped him a million a million times at this point. Po- Popov, I don't, I didn't remember that well. But you know, Popov, he's training out of the same camp as uh, Moldovsky, who just beat uh, Mowry last time out. And at this point, this is the third opponent for Maori that is like a very similar so- style, right? Like he had Ali Asayev, where I had Asayev, and that was a sweat. I was happy to get the draw and not lose. Um, and then I, I bet Moldovsky against him because I really don't think that highly of Maori. He's so huge. He's giant. He's six foot six. But like, what does he do really with that length? You know, is he coming out here, maintaining range, piecing people up with his jab and his one twos? No, not really. He's got a nice front kick. I like that. I, I like his kicks. Uh, his jujitsu is good, but it's only worked against really low level opposition. And it's like you would think for a guy with that size and that ability in the jujitsu department that he could like scramble. But once he's on his back, these guys are just holding him there and he doesn't have much to offer off his back. So my thoughts really are, you know, Popov is a good wrestler. Is he as good as Moldovsky or Asayev? No, I don't think so, actually. And he kind of struggled with Saracom taking him down, which I thought was interesting because Saracom is not much of a grappler either. And his striking is not good. I didn't like his striking and his cardio is pretty bad too. So although I don't like Maori and I do think Popoff could get some takedowns, this is a fight on my list to go look at the dog because I do have some interest at Maori at this line. He's what, like plus 160 right now or plus, uh, let me tell you, plus 156. I think I think that's an interesting one because in terms of who's going to do more damage, he's more likely to do damage at least on the feet. And if he gets on top, he's he's dangerous on top. The way he took Asayev's back, that was nasty. And Asayev couldn't do anything. And we're talking about an Olympic level wrestler, like literally was in the Olympics. So, yeah, I think Maori has a chance. I'm going to look at Maori. I'm going to look at Maori late, the late props two three maybe because Popov does seem to gas. So, yeah, that's where I'm at here. I'm not crazy about either guy, but I thought I'd like pop off more, but I don't. So, yeah. So, I was on the opposite side of you in that draw. I had Maori, and I was extremely annoyed that he couldn't get it done. Like, he couldn't finish that fight, which kind of has made me hesitant to pick him in, in this fight. In fact, on my notebook, I have a very hesitant check mark next to pop off. I don't, I'm, I'm not going to back either side at this point, but. I want. I wanted to back Maori because he's the underdog, and I think the guy's got skills. He's but he's still kind of raw for whatever reason. I mean, a dude with what twelve pro fights, you'd think like you'd think that he'd be get you know developing pretty well and what. But he seems to be similar each time he comes out. He doesn't seem to improve you know vastly. So I'll take Pop off for the pick, but like it's one of those things where like I could be swayed to Maori if if somebody had like a, a strong conviction, but uh after I tape, I'll hit you up if I feel strongly. Yeah. Yeah. If if you if you decide that Maori's the side, let me know and I'll switch because like I could switch easy and I want to take the dog side. So you know, but yeah, it's a it's a tough one. Maori's a big oh wait, here we go. At the weigh-ins, here we go. JD I'm, I'm, says I'm gonna pull them up right now though. These there you go. Yeah, JD says that Maori looked massive at the weigh-ins and he immediately doubled down. Okay. 
JD is usually pretty sharp. He's in my in my comments a lot. We don't always agree, and there's been a couple of times where where you know maybe not, but like most of the time, JD's not he's not out there just like picking people because he's like, yeah, bro, this guy's cool. I I would remember though that you know size is great and all until you're on your back. Word. Then it doesn't matter no more, you know. And I, you know, and I figured Mallory would be bigger because he's a giant of a human being, but at the same time, like, I mean, I don't know, like. I wonder what did they they both weighed in pretty like around the same amount, right? Just Mallory's taller. Yeah, I think he's he's six six. He's huge. Yeah, I'm he's giant. That up now. He's way tall. I have the weigh ins up. Shauna and Kana look the same size. All right, here we go. Oh yeah. Looks like a heavyweight versus chaos a light in the heavyweight. Chat. What's up? Definitely a size difference. Oh, yeah. I said Mallory, uh, JD said Mallory weighed in heavier. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. So, yeah. I'm going to stew on it a bit, but if, but there's a chance I switch. There's a definite, there's a definite chance I switch. I'll let you guys know by the end of the stream. I'm going to stew on it, but we can move on to the next one. We don't need to sit with this one. Um, we have Tyler Santos and Alara Joanne. Um, I guess I'll kick this one off. Santos is probably going to win this fight. I think that's. I don't think that's a hot take at all. I think she's a better fighter. I think she's got enough skill to get this one done in a couple of different ways. So, yeah, Santos, what do you think? Yeah, dude, I mean, <laughs> I feel like she should be the one minus 1,800 over here, not these yeah. other lower – I mean, like, what are we doing here? Like, the, the competition level – What's up? I think she's only minus 1,100. Oh, I saw 900 earlier, but – It was earlier today. She went up to a little bit. Yeah, like, look, Ilara Joanne's a good middle of the road fighter. Like, she's gonna, she's a, she, I like backing her as an underdog in certain spots because she is a dog. But, like, dude, where is she better than Santos here? Absolutely nowhere. She's not even gonna out dog her. Like, Santos is no. a dog too. She's a way better grappler, which Joanne tends to lean on sometimes when she's not doing well on the feet. So, Joanne is super hittable, and Santos has power for days. I, I think Santos is gonna finish her. Thought it was interesting that Santos ITD was like minus 140, but the yeah. under two and a half was plus 100. Like, do people think she's only going to get the finish in the last two and a half minutes of the fight? Yeah, you might as well just play the under two and a half then. That seems weird. That's what I did. Because, look, it, it's a woman's fight. I understand that I'm paying about um, 50%, but I think it should be higher than that. We just saw Joanne get submitted by a Bishop, who, again, is a great jiu-jitsu practitioner. Yeah. But so is Santos. Yeah, she's not as credentialed, but she's very good on the ground. It, I mean, to do what she did to Valentina Shevchenko, like it, it, it was an easy click for me. It might not cash, but in terms of feeling comfortable enough to press that button, make the bet, I liked it. I think. Yeah, she I might actually play that. I haven't played it yet. Um, I have. I used Santos to like get a line just a little bit sweeter um, earlier this week, but that's about it. Uh, I had, I actually had her originally parlayed with Carmouche and I know everybody's on the opposite side of Carmouche all of a sudden. Carmouche is like, I've only, I've only seen Carmouche plays. Really? I've seen a lot of people saying Velasquez or yeah, Velasquez is going to get it done. And I'm like, I don't know. I mean, she got finished by her twice and like Carmouche is still really good. Doing so well I, in that first I had him parlayed, but now I have a money line bet on Carmouche because the opponent switch. So that's annoying. But yeah, I, I seriously, there we go. I'm going to make. MMA clips is a connoisseur of WMMA. Dude, me too. I like that. Most people are a bunch of incels and they're like, no, I don't like women's MMA. And that's because they've the never dumbest done thing ever. There's so much money to be made in women's MMA. Seriously. Boobs are okay, guys. Touch one. It'll make you feel better. Uh, Santo is going to be much, uh, much stronger. Yeah, I agree. Definitely going to be stronger. Um, I So... As far as the finish, I think I might play that under two and a half, actually. After we get off stream, I might just drop a, you know, maybe a quarter unit on or something like that. I'm not going heavy. I moved a little bit. You might be paying up a little bit more this time. Is it better? Is it still better than the inside the distance for Santos? Let me tell you. So Santos ITD is currently minus 135 and the unders. Now nah, they caught on. It's minus 130 now. Same price. <laughs> Go you still there. might as well play the under. Just in like, case Santos breaks her leg or something, but yeah, at that point. So 
Uh, we can move on. We get another one in the heavyweight division. Blagoy Ivanov taking on Sergey Vilostini. Um, what do you think on this one? It's weird, man. Blagoy is so old at the 30, 37 at this point. And it's like not just the age, because I know at heavyweight, it doesn't matter all that much. You could be 42. I mean, I've got a bet on someone we'll talk about soon who's 40 years old. But it's also like just an accumulation of damage at this point. How many times has this dude been hitting that brick of a head of his? And yeah, he hasn't gone down yet, but eventually that's going to go. Maybe now that he's outside of USADA and all that, maybe he's on that good, good stuff. I just was looking at the face-offs. He looks like he's constipated and uncomfortable. So I don't know. He could be. It's an interesting fight. It's just Blagoy is so slow. Like, what does he even really do well anymore? He's so slow. He's so flat-footed. He's not blasting takedowns anymore. He's cage-pushing, landing a few good shots. And that's it. He's really that not doing much. Well. Yeah. And on the other side, Blow Steny, you know, he's young. Not crazy about him in general in terms of his skill set, but he's a better striker, I think. I don't not like Ivanov. He's a great guy. I just think he's like <laughs> getting old and getting slow and clinch, 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 you know. Yeah, exactly. But, uh, I bet him in his last fight. I, fade, I tried to fade Romanov with him, which went terribly, but uh the other guy Boa Steny, he he's a good striker and in terms of like technique i think maybe he's the better striker i think he'll have more success is a better way to put it on the feet because he's much faster he's gonna have more power i the he got a really nice spinning back kick in his last fight out against uh, kareem whatever his name is kasim aras and yeah I, I think he's gonna be winning on the feet here He's got decent takedown defense. He can be taken down, but I think I think he has good takedown defense. And it's not like even of his blasting doubles or anything like that. And I don't think his trips are going to work here. So for me, it, it, it seems like a Sergey Boasteni spot. The way I am thinking to play it, though, because there's no shot I'm going to bet him at like minus 160 against a guy who is UFC caliber or at least was recently. Right. Um, I don't want to bet him at chalk. So I'm considering his decision prop. It's plus 250. Yeah, what is it lined up for the over? The over? Is it one and a half or two and a half? Two and a half minus 160. Because they know, they know Blagoy. And they know that Blagoy's head is like, you can hit him with a hammer, and he still won't go, go down. Eventually, yeah, that will catch up to you. There. But I have a feeling we might go to a decision. So, Sergey decision is plus 250. I might put like a half unit on that, maybe. I'm going to look at this one a bit more. Because yeah, I, I was I was watching one of his uh, I think it was his third to re most recent fight this big Brazilian dude and a lot of cage pushing there was a lot of cage pushing the Brazilian was able to slow him down a bit and I can see Blagoy doing the exact same thing and as long as Sergey can land the bigger shots despite being clinched up he can win that decision so not a bad spot especially, at plus two fifty yeah especially with the way that they're judging things now you know what I mean yep yep yep. Until we all already go over Bryce Meredith. We did. He probably wins a decision. So there you go. Um, but yeah, I kind of agree. Like it's hard, it is hard to bet against a guy like like Ivanov when you're, you know, betting the other guy at chalk. But like Lusteni should have the momentum on his side. Obviously, I think what uh Ivanov's what one and four in his last five fights or something like that. Uh Lusteni should have the 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 momentum, youth you know, explosiveness, like everything except for just being a tank, right? So I got to assume Bill Ostini's going to win, but decision is the way to go. And like, if you can get a decent line, it might be worth a little little sprinkle there. So I'm with it. I echo most of the things you've said in that in that breakdown. That was actually pretty solid, probably more than I would have given if I went first. So good job to you, Mike. You know, um, I'm going to, yeah, I'll side with you, Bill Ostini. I have, I have him checkmarked in my nice little notebook here. So that's exciting. Um, I don't know that I'm going to bet it. I think I'm going to pass. I, I love betting heavyweight overs. Everybody ignores that, but heavyweights outside of the top five in the UFC, essentially, just bet the over. It usually hits. It's a mixture it's of being low there. level and bad mm -hmm. cardio. Yep. And then they, they, just lay, finish in the cardio, they just lay. They just lay mm -hmm. there. Or they'll sling, there's like sloppy, like ugh, punches. It's unreal. So, so it's funny. So like, it gets even worse on like regional level, right? So I'm currently coaching a heavyweight that's going to be making his like debut at some point, his amateur debut, probably like August, September time. And like, he's like an athletic big guy. He's like 245 right now. And like, he could make light heavyweight, but I told him not to because like, dude, 
these guys are just like sacks of dough and they can't fight. They're, they're, they're like, they're guys that have like have played the UFC video game enough that they're like, Oh, I could do that. But they've never exercised a day in their life. So it's like, they're just sacks of garbage and you go out there and you just kick them once to the body and they just fall apart. And that's, you kind of start to see that bleed into the like regional pros that somehow bleed into the higher levels. And the reason that happens is because even if you've got two big sacks of dough in there, one of them has to win. And sometimes that same sack of dough can string together a couple of wins and end up in a big promotion. And you're like, how does this happen? But it does. And it's not right, but it does happen. <laughs> he said um, it's not right. <laughs> it's not right. But that's how we get those fights at the UFC level. JD, where... who's grappling, bro? Who? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, um, but yeah, point is a lot of low-level heavyweights are just going to go over. Um, let's move on to the next one because I actually have a bet on this one. And I am interested to see if we are on the same side. We have Marcelo Golm taking on Daniel James. I do. Do you have any like bets or anything on this one? I do. You do? Okay. Well, mm -hmm. screw it. You take this one away. Let's do it. Dude, I'm riding with my boy James once again. I bet him the last time and I'm doing it again. Let's Look, go. I bet his money line and then I cashed it out because I hated the Saracom fight. I hated that look. Saracom's not a grappler and he just grounded him over and over again and just kept him there. Which is weird when you watch his other. I mean, the dude fought in the Russian regionals and like he was able to defend takedowns. He's probably getting, and he's 42 years old. So it's catching up to him. But Gom doesn't do much. Gom yeah. just doesn't do much. He doesn't do anything. And in their first fight, like Gom was probably winning just based off of like some control and whatnot. And James was kind of low output too. But you can't ignore the power. Like the dude is so, it's it just, it, it's fuck you power, literally. It's just. He, one shot at the right spot or even the wrong spot and you're you're done like you're done so and for me it comes down to is going to come out here and keep taking him down well he had a hard time taking him down the first time he got him down like once and then didn't really get it easy after that so and he slows down too so i i, I do think james can catch him i think james will knock him out the way i'm gonna tackle it is i played the uh finish only on on uh bet online Oh, that's which sick. was interesting because what's up? Is it a good line, dude? It's plus one forty, which is better than his money line. I'm an idiot. I'm gonna play that. Like, yeah, th it's there's there's a limit on it. There's a hundred dollar limit, so I'm like not capping it or Dropping anything. I'm not giving it out. But plus one, that's a stupid line, right? It's I'm oh, happy. James just wait. Yeah, yeah. I guess that makes sense. But I'm I'm happy <laughs> to throw a hundred bucks on him for finish only because. I don't think Gome is going to finish him personally. I, I really don't. I think James is going to knock him out. And if we go to a decision, James probably loses. And then I get my money back. True. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely considering that. That's a that's a solid play. Um, I think Marcelo Gomes' record is deceiving because he has a decent record at 10-4. and four, But he's not very good. Like, people keep saying he's good, but, like, he's not good. And they I say never he's UFC level. That. He's not UFC level. Like, who only said that? I mean, he fought in the UFC. So, like, you get people that are like, we fought in the UFC, bro. But, like, dude, like, Gomes not that. The only reason he beat Davion Franklin is because he just, like, took a bunch of damage and Franklin just kind of fell apart. Franklin also sucks. Yeah, but, like, Franklin was destroying this man. Destroying. Like, he was beating this man within an inch of his life, but he just happens to, like, hang in there. So, like. Oh, these fuckers move the line again. I knew it. What's that now? Plus 115. I'll still play it. I'll still play it. I got to bet on Daniel James. Although, like, it was weird because it was one of those things where that betmma.tips, it put a stupid balloon next to it when I put the actual money line that I bet on, bet him on. So I'm like, what the hell's up with that? So now I'm a fraud, apparently. Whatever. But Oh, th those balloons are – it's fucked up because they use uh, – they they use um bet mma uses the old remember the old uh fight odds tracker we all used best fight oh odds. yeah best fight odds and best fight odds is broken with bet online so if you bet a bet on line bet online line that is better than the domestic books that best fight odds still covers bet mma will put a balloon and good old exactly. mike who runs bet mma god bless his soul but he's kind of useless sometimes i've hit him up about these damn balloons so many times 
he's fixed it for me maybe once and I just gave up because it's like it's not my fault. Yeah. Like, so yeah, I'll just be a fraud. It's fine, whatever. But <laughs> but no, like it, I I literally bet the line and then like then I went to bet MMA and posted it right afterwards and it whatever, whatever. I don't care. I'm uh I'm having a bad year anyway, so who cares? Um either way, Daniel James is getting this one done. I think he knocks him out. I understand Franklin couldn't knock him out, but Daniel James hits like a truck. He obviously he missed weight too. Dude's huge. Uh don't pay attention to the balloons. You got it, dude. I'm not gonna. Uh, but yeah, so like Daniel James, like I bet him as an underdog in a lot of fights and the dude just keeps going and keep beating these guys. Like he's like 40 something years old and just keeps wrecking guys. He's a freak athlete, physical specimen, powerhouse. Yet like now he's missing weight at heavyweight. He's going to be massively oversized for goal. Like I put a unit on him earlier and I want to put more on him. I think he wins this fight at a pretty high clip. And he should not be an underdog to a guy that is just not very good. I mean, not very good in the sense that like he's better than the like the dough bags at heavyweight, but like barely. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I think Daniel James all day. Um, I wouldn't say all day. He he's pretty easy to out decision if you could just avoid the shots. It's just hard to avoid those shots. Yeah. Yeah, I, under, I understand that uh, the decision, if Golem is holding him against the cage for, like, three rounds, yeah. But, like, yeah, no, definitely. Definitely. I, I definitely think Daniel James wins, especially after the weight miss. I think that gives him even more of an advantage. So, uh, but we can move on. We both are on the same side and pretty heavily, it sounds like. Maybe me more than you. But um, we've got, what do we got? Uh, Dakota DeShiva taking on Lisa Molden. Um, I'll kick this one off, I guess. The Chiva is like a massive favorite. Could the line be wide? Maybe, but like she probably wins. So yeah, I'm taking to Shiva. I think she's better pretty much everywhere. Um, I, do I think anybody at like, you know, fairly, I mean, she's 10 and 0, but like just now starting to fight in like a, you know, decent promotion with against like better competition. Do I think anybody at that level should be minus 1800 or more? No, but it's she's probably gonna win. So I'm taking to Shiva. What about you? Yeah, I mean, I, I hope she smokes this girl because when we inevitably get her versus Talia Santos, we're gonna get Santos as an underdog and it's gonna be spectacular. It's gonna be the best thing ever. Um, exactly. The Cheva's really good, but she's overrated right now. We need to see her against better comp. Really, really good striking, good defensive grappling, really learning and improving every fight, getting better and better and better and better. Um Malden, that's her opponent's name, right? Malden. Yep. She's fine. She was actually a little better than I remembered. She can strike. Definitely can't, do not strike here with Decheva. If you're Malden, you're going to die. I can see her trying to grapple. I actually was relatively impressed with the grappling. And maybe she can, you know, do something, but not enough to win. Not enough to win. The way I'm thinking about it is maybe she can grapple enough to hit an over one and a half. So that's something I'm considering. It's minus 125. We are talking about women's flyweights. So we'll yeah, see. I don't mind that. We'll, we'll see. That might be something. But yeah, Decheva should roll. Yeah. yeah, I think it's pretty cut and dry. I don't think we need to spend a ton of time on it. But yeah, I... Oh, wait. We'll see. JD's got some information here. Let's see. Oh, okay. Nah, uh, the plus 3.5 like is useless. Now. You want... You want to play those plus 3.5s when you don't think they can get finished. Yeah, and I think there's a pretty like good likelihood that that the Shiva gets a finish. Maybe over one and a half, but it's probably going to be one of those like accumulation of just beating her face in and the rest like, look, this lady still has like a family to go home to. Her face needs to still be attached. So Well, that's what happened last time, right? Skatitsi was just too tough for her own good. Dude. Tough as tougher than a $2 steak is apparently the line these days, so we're going with it. Dude, seriously, though, definitely tough. So that, that could go over one and a half. But now we get on to my 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 main event, honestly. Liz Carmouche, Juliana Velasquez. Here's the deal. I'm going to I'm gonna take this one away because I'm big on the Carmouche side. Yes, she's 40. She's been – here's the thing. Liz Carmouche has been in the top three to five women in whatever division she's in because she was at 135 for a while back when that was the only division she has been in the top three to five as far as skill in the world since she started. And she is 
easily one of the best women on the planet still to this day. I think at even at 125 in the UFC, she's in the top five. I think she beats most of them girls. She was in the first ever women's fight in the UFC. Yes, she lost. It was to Ronda Rousey. Ronda Rousey was on a tear back then. It was competitive-ish. I mean, you know, but she's beaten. I mean, she's beaten Valentina Shevchenko. She's like, she's beaten Jessica Andrade. Like some of the better women. Wait, she didn't beat Shevchenko. Yes, yeah, she did. They fought twice. She beat her the first time. Way back in like 2000 and Oh, shit. 10, 11, 12, 13, something like that. I'm a casual. I didn't even realize. Yeah, you casual. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. But no, uh, but yeah, no, Karmush has a win over Shevchenko, beat her the first time, lost the second. Um, but I mean, she, she's beaten some of the best, and I think she still has it at this point. She's finished uh, Velasquez twice now. I think she's going to beat her here. I don't know if she finishes her in three rounds. Maybe she does. But, like, I I can't pick Velasquez. And, and people are like, oh, pick the younger fighter. Velasquez is still, like, 37, so it's not that big of a difference. Carmouche is the side as far that as that shocked me, bro. When I pulled up the topology, I didn't think she was that old. I thought she was like in her th mid 30s, younger 30s. Because wasn't she competing in gosh, what was she competing in prior to was it um she's in Bellator for a minute? Like she was competing in other combat sports. I, yeah, so there you go. But like she just I don't know, she's older. Carmouche has been doing this though in MMA since like since I graduated high school, like that's insane. So yeah, Carmouche is definitely the side though. Definitely the side. And I understand money's coming in on, on Velasquez. I actually doubled down on Carmouche today when she, when I saw her at like minus 160 or 170 or something like that. She's winning this fight. I'll be very surprised if she doesn't. And uh, I'm going to look like an idiot because it's right here on stream. Me saying that she's winning this fight very confidently, but Mike, what do you think? You heard it here guys. If she loses, we no longer speak to, look at, or watch Tyler ever again. We're going to go to his gym. We're going to riot. We're going to come Please with forks and torches. Please do. Yes, but yeah, so. look, I, I really wanted to like Velasquez, at least before the line started moving this much. And look, I, I think she's a better striker. And I mean, I think that's pretty clear. We saw that in the first fight. She was much better on the feet, in my opinion. In the second fight, maybe not as much, but that fight went shorter. But the grappling edge seems to be way too significant. I mean, I just, it doesn't seem like she has anything to, like, she doesn't know what to do against Liz in the grappling. She doesn't know what to do. And two times now she's been finished on the ground by Liz. And yeah, Liz is 40, and I hate that. And she's chalk. I hate that. But, you know, I cap her at probably like 70%, and we're not there. We're at minus 160 my math brain isn't the best, but I think that's around 60%, 58 So, yeah, I, I like Carmouche here. I think she's going to get it done again. Is it a decision or a finish? I don't know. It's only two and a half. I mean, it's only three rounds this time, guys. Remember that. What's the overs? Yeah, see, the, the market thinks it's going to go over this time around. Minus 260. Carmouche decisions plus 100. I'm weak. <laughs> what? That's wild. You didn't gonna, just like invite her over? Like, what's up with that? I'm going to go check it out a little bit more and I'm going to wait, you know, because I won't, I, I won't be devastated if I don't bet minus 160 and she wins. Like, I'll be right. okay. I'll be able to live my life. But money's coming in on Velasquez. And if the line gets even kinder, I'm going to, I'm going to get in. Mick For Cooper, sure. And, you know, I, I tried, I try, I try not to do that anymore before shows. Because I feel like I just get too slow. And I'm a very expressive, fast, loud talker. And I feel like that's better suited for streams than high mic. So, I agree. But for, for the panel next week, I will be blazed out of my mind. Don't worry about it. That's going to happen. And drugs are bad, okay? Are you like Mr. Mackey? That's an aged reference. But either way. Uh, so we're both on Carmouche. We both think she wins at a pretty high clip. I think she wins at even higher clip than you do. I'm very confident in her. Most confident pick on this card. Uh, well, okay, actually, I take that back. Santos is probably my most confident pick on the card, but, you know, whatever. Uh, but let's move on because I know we're on the same side on this one, and you've already bet this one, and I have not yet, but I've toyed with the idea. We have Dennis Goldsaw taking on Litton Vassell. You can take this one away. I took away the last one. What do you got? King Vassell, baby. Let's go. I love this dude so much, bro. He's been getting it done, 
and he's been the dog almost every single time. Pretty much. And I, and I just back him every time, and he just keeps getting it done. And people say, oh, he's old. Oh, he's chinny. Oh, he's hittable. Pulls through every damn time. Dude's got crazy power. He's a fantastic counter grappler. Can he be mm-hmm. taken down here? Absolutely. But we've literally seen Goldsov be out scrambled. We just saw him get out scrambled by Delia, who's a slow, slow man. He just muscled up and got on top. Um, uh, like Vassell, like he he's good at scrambling. He's good at reversing position. He's good at getting on top in the striking department. Goldsov is certainly cleaner, and Goldsov is a good fighter, very good. I rate Goldsov very high, but he's unreliable. He's inconsistent, and v- Vassell's the opposite. Dude pulls up and does the same thing every single damn time. And I just think inevitably, I think there's going to be some grappling early. Goldsov will get the takedowns, get a little control. Vassell will reverse, get back up. And I think sooner or later, Vassell's going to clip this dude and put him out. That's what I think. So he's not a uh, fraud. He's he's really good, but he yeah, is I don't know if he's a fraud, But he did get flattened in his last fight, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. That I mean, but it was it, also come on. It was right on Fajera. Like yeah. he's he's a bad grappler, but the dude is an insane hitter. Dude, he hits like a truck. But like, also that was what four months ago. So I don't know. Maybe it's a little early to come back. Uh, a little I early. Think, Vassell's not the type of guy that has just like one punch, shut your lights out power. But he can crack you, put you on the ground, and then finish you with some ground and pound for sure. And that's in fact most of his finishes are ground and pound finishes. Um, which is a lot of his wins. Maybe he, maybe the sell by TKO is the play, honestly. Um, TKO specifically? I mean, KO or TKO, but yeah, TKO <laughs> specifically. It's got to be a TKO. He puts him out cold. It's no good. There? Oh, that's funny. But yeah, I think, I mean, the sell probably wins the, the TKO. So yeah. I don't know who said uh, Kudalaba was locked. Okay. So he's talking about me. First of oh, all, no. You will never, ever catch me saying the word lock. I didn't even call Tyler Santos a lock. I don't say that word. You'll never hear that word out of me in my life. Second of all, I didn't even bet his money line. I bet his finish only. What the fuck are you talking about, bro? Mm, Finish only. See, yeah, that's that's fair. Um, Yeah, like, it's it is so like okay. We're going we're gonna to do it. We're going to talk about Throw it. it in the the thing. I don't even have this terminology. I Who There was a guy dude? in my chat the other day. I sent you a, a photo of how many comments, and he kept going after that. Like, dude just kept going because he was so mad that I said I had a 10-unit bet like on that card, which I did. I even messaged you about it when I placed the bet. So, like, it's not like I'm just making this up, right? And he was dead set that I'd bet Kurt Hollabaugh's money line at 10 units. I did not bet Kurt Hollabaugh's money line for 10 units. I understand that Hollabaugh can lose a decision. That is what I so I bet the decision no action on Hollabaugh because all the finish upside was on him. It was a push. This dude was irate though in my in my comments. The dude was he was so mad and, and I he, love when they get upset. It's dude, so good. He thought it's he was so getting good. to me, and I was just trying. I was just kind of doing enough to egg him on to keep. Comments that helps. You know, if YouTube, if YouTube sees that like your video is getting a, just a ton of comments, they're going to show that to more people. And like this dude was just, uh, he just kept going. So it was, yeah, JD remembers JD had my back. Like he was, he was jumping in on this dude at one point, which is hilarious. Like this dude was nuts. Um, I can't, I can't remember his name. I don't want to say it out here anyway. Um, but he was upset. He was a dude that was like a, a he had a channel that like, he like stre- was streaming video games and stuff. And like, apparently he didn't get enough views cause he quit doing it really quick. But like, yeah, he was like getting mad. He was like saying that my videos don't get any views and that like my channel sucks and all this stuff. I'm like, but you're here watching my stuff and you're commenting for like days on end, like days on end. Yep. Definitely right there. Yep. He was helping my channel without even knowing it. It was awesome. So like, if he's watching this, I hope he is. Actually, I know he is. He's probably watching this because he's just really mad right now. And hopefully, after Stay this mad, is over, we can get a nice little fight on <laughs> Angelo in disguise. Uh, Angelo actually bought one of my t-shirts, so I don't know. Maybe we buried. I feel like we buried the hatchet when he bought my t-shirt because, like, all you've got to do to make me like you again is buy my merchandise. Like, I'm pretty easy to appease. Like, if you buy my stuff, why am I only cool. noticing your hoodie right now? Oh, the come and go hoodie. <laughs> <laughs> so the, I. You're not going to believe this, but it's actually a local convenience store here. Um, and it's super weird. So like one of my trainers that works here for me, 
he actually is a manager at come and go and hooked me up with the like in his like as, as a day job he works here part-time um he actually hooked me up with this for free because it's dope it's come and go like it's hilarious yeah like good stuff yeah so anyway yeah it's a uh it's a comfy hoodie but but yeah these guys that are like help the channel because they're just like Oh yeah, he refused to believe that bet existed. He did. He was like, "That's he was like, that's not real." Whatever. I don't know. It was fun. Um, I've been talking about this way too long, but it was a blast. And I hope that he's still watching this, just angry. And I'm sure that he is. Um, so that's fun. But um, yeah, TK Odds saying couch, you did awesome. Um, oh yeah, he was the uh, TK Odds is the one that I did uh, the live stream for the Bellator. It was supposed to be Bellator what three oh three oh two, but it ended up being Bellator champ series belfast or something like that that because I, I was telling you I, uh, he's got a channel in spanish so if you speak spanish man you can get his breakdowns um but yeah sharp dude he was giving us all the insight on boxing and like dude knows his stuff yeah that's my guy we did pretty good on that card too we missed on tim wilde but otherwise we did good um anyway what's going on the main event i feel like we're probably gonna be on opposite sides here and I'm not confident in my pick, but we're probably going to be on opposite sides. We have Ante Delija uh, taking on Valentin Moldovsky. Everybody's on Moldovsky, and I think Delija's going to get a get a decision. I do. I think he's going to just squeak out a decision, and everybody's going to be really upset. And because Moldovsky's good, but like, I feel like sometimes he's a little inconsistent for my liking, and that could be the issue. And Delija's what not. What's up? And Delia's not inconsistent. I mean, not lately. Dude's got like. Bro, well, he lost like, the first round to Maurice Green. That's true. But like, he won the fight. <laughs> Did you see the Shelton Graves fight? <laughs> okay. So he's incon inconsistent within a fight. I'll give you that. But he keeps winning. Fair enough. He does like, win. When's his last loss? It's been a while. Bruno in 21. There you go. It's been a while. That was what? Like four or five fights ago at least? I have it open. Five fights. Yeah. So like that was a while ago. So like he's doing he's doing well. I think he's gonna squeak out a decision here. And I think a lot of people are gonna be mad. And I think it's gonna be a close fight. And I think he's gonna squeak out a decision. But like I'm not How do you see it playing out? What's up? How do you see it playing out? Ooh, I think it's gonna be back and forth. I think Modovsky's probably gonna come out and win the first round. Um Delia's gonna win a second the second round in like a super, super close one where people are gonna be like, Well, Delia you think he gets takedowns or something. I think he's going to push him against the cage when he can't get the takedowns and hold him for a while and get a lot of control time. And I think he'll get a takedown at some point, but like, I think he's going to do a lot of pushing and I think the judges are going to give it to him. Um, I'm still not convinced that I'm still not convinced that all of the judges are on board with the damage scoring. I know a lot of them are, but I'm not convinced that all of them are. Yeah. We're not fully there. Yeah. A lot of them are. Um, but then like, sometimes you still get like a decision where the guy did no damage, but just held him and gets the win. So I don't know. Um, oh, here we go. My guy's on, uh, on, on, on tight, on tight here too. Yeah. Mabowski's lazy. There you go. That's, that's kind of what I was getting at with his, like just kind of inconsistent in his performances. It's lazy is another word that I would use <laughs> a little more aggressive. I do like it though. He is at times, Mike, what do you think about that? Him being lazy? Yeah, do you think that's accurate, or do you think, like... I don't know about lazy. He just has that kind of fight style where he's not high pace. Um, he's He 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 can be inconsistent at times, too, but I wouldn't say he's lazy, just low output. Go He, he goes with what he's comfortable with. Yeah. and But if he, if he is low output, and if he does... Delia's you know, low output, too, though. That's true, but, like, if... if if the Leah out truck by Graves, <laughs> yes, you got on the point. numbers. Oh, you got a point. You got a point. Yeah, lazy might be an aggressive term. I'll give you that, but I do get what he's saying. Like, he doesn't. Yeah, low output equals lazy. Okay, there you go. Yeah, lazy is a more aggressive way of saying he's low output. I get you. Um, yeah, I could see Delia getting a really close decision here, and he was plus money. I think he's still plus money. I don't know if I. I mean, I don't know if I. I'm sold on him, but like, it's close. This is a close fight. I the winner. I don't think it's. I think it's going to decision. I really do. I don't think we're getting a finish. What do you think of, on the over? Let me check. Let's see. We got over two and a half 
Minus 205. Now, nah, fuck that. These are heavyweights. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> a tornado kick to the calf. I hope so. That'd be hilarious. Nah, dude. Yeah. The new meta is the hip hip knockouts. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hip knockout. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, fighters in the gym now like this, bro. Dude. <laughs> well, it's kind of like after McGregor fought Cerrone and everybody started doing these shoulder strikes and stuff. Like, we were joking about it in the gym after that happened. We were like, the next day, I wrote it on the on our workout boards. Uh, like, we were like, read all of our workouts and stuff. On the heavy bags, I had people doing shoulder strikes as a joke. It, yeah, I mean, it's one of those things where it's like, after something crazy happens, everybody's like, oh, is that a thing? You Yo, know? TKO, bro, come on. What expo? Well, that was a fucking robbery, first of all. First of all. And even if you felt like Bader won, like, how is that an exposure? Like Bader's a good fighter. He's old. Bader is a good fighter. But he's a good fighter. I still think it was a robbery. Not as bad as Benson getting the robbery right after or right before. But well, that was brutal. That was Dude. criminal. That was you like what I hated the most. A gun type of thing. I, I hated that the fight ends. There's no winner announced. But Benson brings in his whole family, puts his daughter on his shoulders, and starts running around like he won the world title. Like, you have yo, to give it to him at that point. If I'm a judge and I had it close, I see that and I'm like, maybe I missed something. Maybe he did win. That was a robbery. That was that was a horrible, horrible, horrible decision. You're right. That was a robbery for sure. Um, yeah, yeah, he did beat him back in combat sambo. However, if they ever, you know, if they ever want to run it back, even at this point, I think Fedor's got him. <laughs> that would be a good one. That would be hilarious. I'd Dude, watch. Fedor is easily the he is the greatest heavyweight of all time. I don't care what anybody says. I know everybody's like, oh, you know, Stipe or Francis or whatever. But, like, dude, Fedor is the greatest heavyweight of all time. Prime, I prime Fedor beats Stipe. Prime Fedor can be still, to this day, be pretty much any heavyweight outside of, like, maybe Aspinall, who is, like, a freak. I think Aspinall's – he's the real deal. But, yeah, Prime Fedor beats all those, like, out of shape heavyweights that just can't fight. And, like, even some of the good ones. Fedor's the man. Fedor's the man. Always has been. Definitely one of my favorites of all time. Sure, he was undersized, but dude still got it done. Dude, that Kevin Randleman fight where Fedor gets suplexed on his neck and he's like, and then he just gets back up and beats that guy's face in. Like, let's go. Like, that was that was it. Like, Fedor's the man. Um, yeah, TKO, that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely that one. That was the one. That was rough, dude. That was rough. Henderson did not win that fight. I was mad because I bet against Henderson in that one, too. Uh, I had both. I had both the Russians, and they both got robbed back to back. Word, um, but yeah. So we're on opposite sides of the main event. Neither of us seem like we're, you know, diehard. I didn't on even break side. it down, bro. You skipped me. Oh, you didn't break it down. Go for it. I thought you did. <laughs> nah. Let's go. Um. Yeah. So look, at the current line, it's a pass for me, just because Modovsky is low output, and you know, just a few moments from. Uh, Delia could get it done. I like Delia. I've backed him many, 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 many times. He made me plenty of money. But like, he, dude, he's also super unreliable. Like, low output is himself, right? Like, how are you getting outstruck by Shelton Graves? Why are you getting outstruck by Maurice Green? Why are you getting taken down by Maurice Green? I mean, it's not a great look. I also think Capaloza sucks. And losing to him, like the knockout is fine. Everyone can get knocked out. The decision loss was kind of weird, and I. Didn't think he should should like he lost that fight, but I didn't think he should have like he did underperformed in my opinion. I think he can get out grappled here. I think that's part of the issue for him. That's why I'm not like it's favored or pass for me. I I, I just can't get to Delia here. Probably has more power. He's gonna have a power edge here. And when he throws, when Delia throws, it looks good. He looks like a good striker, but he, he does he doesn't have that. Like he's not coming out there and. Throwing like if we got real strike counts, not that bullshit PFL gives us, I doubt he'd ever be higher than like 50 significant strikes, maybe in the five rounder with Capaloza, but very he's very low output himself. So I can't trust him as the underdog. I'm kicking myself for not just betting Moldovsky when he was minus 115, like yesterday or two days ago. I just didn't have the time to fully tape it. So I was waiting and then money came in on him. I'm hoping now I'm seeing a lot of Delia bets on Twitter. I'm seeing the line moving right now towards Delia. If I can get 115 Moldovsky, I'll do it because I think he's like 60% here. But 
yeah, it, it's a pass at the line. I think Moldovsky's just the better mixed martial artist overall. I think he's better probably everywhere, including cardio. But again, two unreliable guys. Do I really need to have a bet on this one? Nah. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it can definitely be a pass fight, honestly. Uh, yeah, it's one of those fights where, like, if I could play both sides and feel good about it, I would, but I don't think I'm going to get to. I don't think so. Um, unless unless a bunch of money comes in on, on Dalia, and I feel like it's going to split the line, but I don't think so. Um, the... Uh, the, the heavyweight overs on this on this card particularly, I think if I'm looking through them, the only one I'd be concerned about, like as like I don't I wouldn't play the over, would probably be Goldsov and Vassell or oh Andrew don't James don't play that over. don't play that over yeah yeah those are the two that I wouldn't play for heavyweight over, but like otherwise I could see all of the heavyweight overs hitting. It's because it's a lot of grapplers. Yeah, like the Maori one could you could get like nervous anytime a submission's being like See, that one's that's one and a half though. They're almost all of yeah. them are two and a half. That one's one and a half, but minus one seventy five is kind of icky. Yeah, but like that probably goes over one and a half. Yeah, but um, one Maori's knees when he throws those knees down the middle, definitely that shit could put him out. Uh, MMA clips, dude. There's a Discord. Um, there's a Discord channel that like they update it every month, and it's like. You know, the database is updated to current like 20. Like, they have is this uh, game actually fun. What is this, dude? It's a blast. Okay, let I've me heard, tell you. About like, it. What, it, I know the prep, like, what's the actual gaming experience like? Like, what are you doing? Okay, so there's two ways you can do it. You can just do the like I do on the channel a lot, where I just you just sim fights. That's one way, but the really fun way is you get to be either the CEO or owner of a, of a company, right? You can it's it's super awesome. Like, you get to go in there, you control everything, you get to hire fighters book the matches, you know, you can create your own promotion. You can take over one that's already in existence. Um, kind of like can, a career uh, mode. Kind of, except it's super crunchy and in depth. Like everything is broken down by like numbers and like a percent of like 100 fighters develop. They get worse over time. Like they age, new fighters are brought into the game as, as time goes on. Like there's every training camp is in the game. Like you can have guys go into team alpha male or whatever and like they get better at team alpha male stuff like you know wrestling and stuff um or like whatever you know and like it's super super in-depth like you're running shows you're pick picking the network it's on like if you want to broadcast on youtube or freaking amazon or hbo or whatever like everything it's super legit you can adjust the rules like i like playing games where it's like okay uh we're gonna make head kicks like soccer kicks totally allowed like Totally. The only thing I hate is that you can't make headbutts legal. They're just not, it's not an option. I, can they bite? Can you do biting? I don't think you do biting either, but you can do stomps. You can do like soccer kicks. You can do all that stuff, but like headbutts, they won't let you it. Yeah. It's super, super fun. Like it's I'll a, check it out. I'm a nerd. So I'll check it out. If you do get it through my link, I get paid. If you do, it's in the description of all my videos. And How much also, does such a thing cost? Uh, it's like 30 bucks or something. Um, like usually it was on sale not long ago, but like they don't do sales like all that often, but it was on sale not long ago and you got a little bit off. That's when MMA clips bought it. It was like 30 bucks or so. Um, there is, like I was telling him, there's a discord channel that has like, I, I don't know anything about discord. Let's be honest. I, I think I'm in your discord, but I don't ever look at discord. It it's, um, God, what's it called? I can't, modern warriors or something like that. Something like that. But it's a, but like the, the, um, where can you find, let me, let me, let me find it. I think I got it right here. One second. I'm going to find out what that discord thing is. I can probably MMA clips message me on uh, Twitter and I think I can link it to you, but it's called, yeah, it's just like a WMMA five. So world of mixed martial arts five modern warriors discord or whatever. But yeah, uh, I'll, I'll link it to you. If you message me on Twitter, I'll do it when I get a chance, but that's the fun one because then you get the real life roster rather than the default like game roster. If the roster gets big, the game starts to run a little slow, which the roster is massive on the Modern Warriors one because it has like everybody, like regional guys that you're like, who's this guy? You know what I mean? Like That's it's fun. super sick. That's fun. Dude, it's a blast. Like you would love it. Um, you can download a demo for free and try out a little bit. I would recommend that if you're on the fence, but it's a blast, dude. And um, and like it's 
it, I, it's like the only game I ever play, and I use I the, and I don't really play it normally. I just play it on the channel now because I don't have time to actually play games. But every now and then, when I get a chance to play it on the channel, it's a blast. I miss being able to play games. It's fun as all get out. So, but yeah, dude, I definitely recommend it. At least get the demo. I'm gonna check You're it gonna out. Double get, Vision, yes, yes. You think he's dog of the week? I don't know. Not dog of the week, but yes. He might win. Oh yeah, sweet. I'm gonna come. Sorry, found it. Dope. Um, the, the line's not as fun as, as it was before, though. He, I yeah, think Damon Jackson's the dog of the week. I think Damon Jackson gets this done. Interesting. Interesting. Because everybody's on Hernandez, and I don't think Hernandez can keep up. I think he's getting choked out. But just Damn, saying, a lot I of people getting, on Brechke. Brechke Army, baby, let's go. Ah, I think now that apparently, apparently it's a real thing. Now that you saw has gone, like. Guys, I'm turning back the clock. Yeah, yeah, but you guys got to keep in mind. Walter has been on the juice his entire career. He's been fighting in Russia the entire his entire career, training in Russia. He's clearly on the juice, and his tap out his nickname's hilarious. It's the clean monster. Like if that dude's clean, I'm roided out, and I've never touched anything in my life, and you can tell. Um, so yeah, neither of those guys is going to be clean in this fight. I can tell you that much. Yeah, and so I so I was watching. I won't go too much into it. We're on a PFL breakdown, but I was watching uh, Walker's fights or Ignacio. I think his last name's Ignacio, isn't it? I don't know. I kept seeing Walter Ignacio. I think it's because they're half brothers. They have the same mom, but a different dad, I think. Yeah. So his last name is probably not actually Walker. They probably just do that for the UFC for the promotion. Um, but one thing I saw about him that I really did like and actually swayed me to pick him is he was still actually shooting takedowns when he was exhausted and I'm not talking about the like takedown that you get from heavyweights where they just like reach for the legs and try to fall on you. He would actually change levels and like drive through when he was totally just wiped out and exhausted. And that's what swayed me to pick him, but I'm not going to bet that fight. That's insane. Like that's just, nah, I thought about playing the over one and a half, but I think the line kind of like got away from me. What is it? Cause it was good plus money. Originally it was like plus plus one eighty five or something. And I was going to play it. And then like, by the oh, time I went to bet it, Gone. Yeah, I would I would have hit that too. Yeah. Yeah. I was like working and I was like, oh, I'll bet it when I get off work today. That shit's no. going over, bro. I'm telling you. I am betting minus 175, but that shit's going over. Yeah, it was it was plus 185, wasn't it? Yeah, I just checked. It did. I don't know how long that lasted, probably not long, but I saw it when like uh on fightodds.io, I saw it when the line dropped and I was like, oh dude, I gotta go bet that. And then I just <laughs> didn't get to it in time. It lasted six minutes. Exactly. Before exactly. it was minus money. Yep, exactly. Yeah, there was no way I was getting it, but I was watching when the lines dropped, and I was like, "Oh shoot! If that stays even remotely, I'm betting it." No, it did not. But and it is what it is. Uh, we can get out of here. I still got to get dinner. I know you didn't want to go too late. You know, you got you saw the PFL two uh, lines drop though, dude. Okay, okay, real quick then before we go, PFL two. That card is stacked. That is a good one. Like I'm excited for that. If you like. Just like early, I, I okay. I've already got my. I've like wrote out my notes and stuff. I haven't like put my notes in, but I've wrote out the card and got everything going. Who like anybody stand out to you as like, oh, that's interesting. Like, Brent right Primus. away or not? Brent. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I know he's getting up there, but dude's only got three losses. Should I think he's gonna smoke guess. Miranda. I think he's gonna smoke him. Miranda's not bad, but yeah, I think Brent's a better Miranda's fighter. Miranda's just fine. He's just fine. the only thing I worry about is the thirty-nine year old. Yeah, but he hasn't looked bad. No. No, he's looked pretty good. So I think Brent's – and like what's his line right now? Minus 130. It was minus 115 at open, mm -hmm. and I hesitated. I'm going to go tape it real quick, but I'm probably going to play it. Yeah, I like that. I like that quite a bit. Um, I might play it. I haven't yet. I don't know. What do you think uh, of C being the minus 170 favorite at light heavyweight? Sadabu. Who is? Sadabu? Oh, I don't know about that. But yeah. Silvera's okay. Silvera kind of stinks, but – yeah, he's okay. Um, but Saudi was also like 37. So like, I don't know. Like he's getting up there. Um, another one that stood out to me, it's Collard and Pitbull. Mm -hmm. That's one that I think somebody's getting knocked out. So I don't know what they're going to line that at, but like if we can get a decent line on the under. Like I know that a lot of times Clay Collard goes to decision, even though he's like landing these shots on guys. But like Pitbull hits like a truck and he could knock out Collard. But like, Pitbull's old. Like, uh, Patricky is like what thirty eight now. Dude could get slept. So I think that one might be a, a, a an interesting underplay if that 
comes out well. I don't think those are out yet, just the money lines. But not gonna lie, Polizzi at plus four twenty five is pretty interesting too. Dude, I, I'm an Impa believer. I made bread off of him against Silvera because Silvera I don't think is that good. And then I I, I didn't bet him against uh, what's his face, the last fight, uh, the one everybody said he, he was gonna get smoked, Eblin. The Eblin oh, fight. oh, oh! You're talking about uh, Impas, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Eblin, yeah. I picked Impa to beat Eblin. I didn't bet it simply because I forgot. And then, you know, the fight was close. I don't know if he won it necessarily. He looked good, but he did. Polizzi's good, bro. Polizzi's good. Polizzi's a guy that if he gets you down to the mat, he can hold you there, and like he's durable as hell. Like that dude can take that dude can take a brick to the face, and like. The amount of punishment that dude took from Yoel and just like, whatever, man. Like, eventually, like, he just took too much. And I was like, nah. But that guy can take a beating, and he's just relentless, and he can he can wrestle with some of the best. So, like, if he gets a hold of Impa, I can see him just holding that guy down. And I'm pretty sure – am I wrong? Doesn't Polizzi train with Eblin? Eblin's at where? American top team? No. Isn't, isn't Eblin somewhere else now? Police it trains like, at uh, it's Couture, called. Right? Um, what's up? Aren't they both at Extreme Couture now? Am uh, I wrong? I know Police used to train at a different camp. One sec, I'm pulling it up. I don't I'm like sure not the Yeah, now it says he's at Capital City. Let's see what his Instagram says. Capital City. Okay. Yeah, he's at Extreme Code Tour now. I like that. Yeah, I was gonna say I've definitely seen videos of of Polizzi grappling with Chris Curtis. Okay. So, yeah, I could definitely see Polizzi pulling that one off in a big. Oh shit! Up. And it opened up plus one sixty. Oh damn! And he blasted up the. Yo, I'm gonna play. I'm gonna play that. <laughs> Dude, I might let it let it simmer for a little bit and see if it gets any any better for us. You know. Oh man, if it does, that'll be crazy. Because like. I understand Impa probably should win. He's a better striker. He's probably going to win, time. but not minus 600. Dude, and like Polizzi's a dog, like real dog. So, because also, didn't he take that uh, Yoel fight on short notice? Am I wrong? Yeah, Yoel was supposed to fight someone else. Yeah, so like you can only sort of give him a hard time for that. Like, I mean, look, it's, it's styles make fights, right? And the truth is Polizzi needs his takedowns. He's not good enough of a striker to strike with yeah. most people. And he was, he was never taking Yoel down. Like the, that was just never going to happen. So I, I think I even bet Yoel there. Cause I love Polizzi. I backed him out many, many times, but yeah, I'll probably do it again here. There you go. Yeah. I bet, I bet Polizzi really big over Neil and uh, it was pretty close to even money. I think if I remember correctly. So uh, when I, you know, Either way, but yeah, I think Polizzi's the shot. I might take a shot on him. I might see see how that looks. But but anyway, we can wrap this up. Those were the those are the lines that stick stick out to me for that. I believe I have uh, Effie from Any Action Sportscast breaking down PFL two with me next week, assuming he's still good to go for that. So if you guys would like to tune into it, I'd sure appreciate it. I think we're doing it Wednesday of next week again. Unfortunately, this PFL card uh, PFL one is tomorrow on a Thursday, which is super annoying, but. Okay. Why midweek fights are the best? Uh, I don't like it because I'm stuck at work until eight o'clock my time, and I'm running a gym, so it's not like I can watch the fights. So I'm gonna have to, I have to like avoid any spoilers and then watch the fights when I get home, which is a pain in the butt. Um, if if it was like the contender series where they start like late, sure, but like I don't, I think these start fairly early, don't they? Yeah, six thirty Eastern time, so five thirty p.m. my time, so like. I'm still at work for a few more hours at that point. So, you know, like if they started at like eight my time, that'd be great, but they don't. It is what it is. Uh, but either way, next week they're on Friday. That's a little bit better for me. Um, and it gives me an extra day for this stream to actually have people, you know, check it out. So it is what it is. But all right, folks, uh, couch, give them, give them your spiel, tell them your things, and then we'll get out of here. Couch Warrior Pod on Twitter, Couch Warrior Podcast on YouTube. Did my uh, YouTube breakdowns on today's Wednesday, yesterday, with my guy, um, my guy Dogfather. I fucking love that guy. Um, make sure to check that out. We broke down the whole card. I don't have a ton of UFC bets this week, but I have a few. 
All my bets are now posted on the Beer Money Picks Discord. I have the link in my bio, my YouTube in the link tree, and in my Twitter bio in the link tree. Uh, it's 40 bucks a month with Couch Warrior Pod, the code Couch Warrior Pod. You get 25% off. And it's not, I'm the MMA guy. I'm the only one who does MMA in there, but there's basketball, football, baseball, hockey, darts, all the stuff that I don't understand anything about. There's a bunch of guys who are real good with it. So make sure to check that out if you're interested in my plays in those sports. And yeah, and then I just did an interview today with this guy, Reese Watkins, up and coming guy, 3-0 and right now. I think he'll be on the Contender Series this year or next probably. So I'll drop that probably tonight or tomorrow. And then I'm talking to another really dope up and comer, Malcolm Wellmaker, our guy, Dan Levy. He's been screaming off the rooftops about him. I've watched him a little bit. He seems real good. So I'll be talking to him on Friday and I'll probably drop that then too. And yeah, and then get hyped for the fucking panel next week, guys. We got UFC 300 panel coming back. It's going to be me and Tyler on my channel. We're going to be joined by Lou Betcha, Free Lou, and uh, Pepe for anybody who does know him. And I'm currently working on trying to solidify a fighter to join us. Fighters don't like long shows, so it's going to be difficult, but I'm working on it. Dude, okay, guys, if you haven't been watching the Couch Warriors interviews that he's doing with these fighters, first off, go watch them. They're very good. Some are better than others uh, because— The Gooden one's the best one. Gooden and Finney and Matthews are my three favorite ones I did. The Gooden interview is so freaking good. That one—it's a good one, right? <laughs> It's really, really good, though. You you need to go watch that interview. It's fantastic. The Connor Matthews one, I know everybody's kind of down on him now because he just lost, but the Connor Matthews interview was fantastic. Um, the Finney one was really good, too. Yeah, 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 like you said. But, dude, that good an interview. You guys need to go watch that. That was fantastic. I remember watching that and thinking, like, man, Couch needs to do more of these interviews. And it looks like he's bringing you that content. He's got those interviews coming up. Watch all of them. Don't skip the interviews. I know you guys are just here for picks. But these interviews, sometimes you get – a little bit of information about these fighters that can then later help you make a pick. Or maybe you just get to listen to something that's kind of cool and you don't have to just constantly have picks going in your head and it gives you a moment of a mind of uh, some clarity. And then when you go back to looking at your picks, things come through clearer. So go watch after this stream, go watch all of couch warriors interviews. If you haven't watched them yet, I'm telling you now it's the thing you need to do. Bro, you, you got to switch careers. You you got to be a salesman. You, you're you one of the best hype men I've ever seen in my life, bro. Brother, it's I'm always selling gym memberships all day, every day, my friend. So that's what I do. I missed a sale today. And I was like, dumbfounded. I was like, how did that happen? Like, <laughs> I don't know. dude. <laughs> you're real good at it, dude. It blew you're my mind. Me I to watch my own interviews, dude. Go watch them. They're good. <laughs> Do you watch your own interviews? They're good. Oh, like, God. it's worth it. Like, nah, I watch back to see how I did, but that's yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my girlfriend made fun of me because I watch my own videos back after I post them. But it, she was kind of like, how can you watch yourself on video? And I was like, you get used to it. But like. It's yeah, rough the first, first like weird. 20 times. Yeah. After you, after the, after you do it a few times, you get used to it. But yeah, like hearing your own voice at first is weird. But no, seriously, guys, are those all in a playlist? All those interviews? Yeah. No. Okay, here's the thing. Here's what you're going to do. You're going to go to that playlist, guys, and you're going to hit play all on the playlist and just watch them suckers until you fall asleep. But let it keep repeating as you sleep. Get couch where that ad revenue. But um, but definitely go watch those. You're going to need to. They're seriously good, especially the good one. All right, with that said, I've hyped him enough. He's a fantastic interviewer. I hope he keeps doing these. If not, Even if he's not getting enough views on them, I want to listen to them. So there we go. Thank you, uh, we'll get out of here guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate all of you. I hope you got some value out of this PFL stream and we'll see you next week.